boy and make her up and make money barrels of oil. Mm. No need for pesticides to poison all our soil. Who's got no food? They got no clothes. They got no rent. When right now it's time to hell. Thank you for taking time for hemp. I'm your host, Casper Leach. You are listening to Time for Hemp all around the world on Tumblr, SoundCloud, iTunes, iHeartRadio, anywhere sound is found around the internet. We are found around the internet making sound. Please share us with your friends. Go to timeforhemp.com, find your favorite app to download into your smart device and enjoy us on the go. That's how my mom liked to enjoy me more when I was on the go and just call home occasionally. And she even said the, the the less the occasion, the more she enjoyed it. I don't know. Anyway, with that said, it is Tuesday, and we are going to pass this joint chat over to our joint guest here on the big joint broadcast on Time for Him. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Casper. How are you doing today? Pretty groovy, thank you. And uh, we got a beautiful day here in Potland, Oregon, and I'm enjoying Potland, Oregon herb. How about you? Yeah, well, you know, I'm uh, I'm enjoying some of that good Canadian herb. Um, I, I, I'm lucky; I get it from various places. I think I think today, wonderful province of British Columbia is my supplier today. For- awesome. They're uh, obviously, I'm sure, very well known. I'm sure you've heard BC Bud is uh, is pretty good. I have. I heard that the uh, customer care that you get there is amazing as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, service with a smile, that's for sure. Cool. It's beautiful here today as well. And I think we've got a really good show today. We've got a returning guest. And who's that? Peter. I'm, well, hello. Know, hey, Peter. How you doing today? Oh, just wonderful. Also enjoying some some BC bud myself. <laughs> nice. Locally nice. grown. Excellent. Uh, if you, Peter uh, Karskaden, did I say that correctly? You got it. You got it. He's uh, he's been on the show with uh, Lift Expo. We talked about it there uh, back in the springtime, uh, just before the show in Toronto. Um, I was lucky enough to attend, and uh, uh, we actually had a booth there with uh, the seed company. And um, wow, I got to tell you, Peter, we uh, we really enjoyed ourselves out there. It was a, a great event, of course. Um, I was I have to tell you honestly, I was very impressed with the uh, with the turnout from the public. Um, I, I was always, of course, at a trade show, you're always sort of concerned about that, but yeah, participation was really, really high. I, I think you guys did well. Thanks. I, uh, I was, I was really happy with the turnout. I think we went in with a lot of really big ambitions and, you know, we weren't necessarily sure exactly how everything would play out. And I think everything came together in a really beautiful way. And the, the community really, really came and brought their all and, you know, it resulted in a really great show. Yeah, you bet. Of course, there was a little bit of grief with the, the uh, our fancy uh, police service there trying to uh, close down a lot of the dispensaries just previous to the show. I don't know if it was a, a little bit of a show of force from the from the licensed producers against the uh, people who have you know sort of put their neck on the line for the last uh, last decade or just a little longer. Um, you know, providing the medical patient with their cannabis. So hopefully there's a happy medium somewhere down the road and um, these dispensaries are selling licensed producer cannabis or something along that lines, everybody uh, everybody working together. Um, well, of course, we've yet to see what's going to happen with the, with the government. Um, uh, on our last show, actually, we talked a little bit about the discussion paper uh, that uh, Health Canada... Uh, is offering, and we made the suggestion that every and all should take the time to uh, read the discussion paper Absolutely. and then uh, take the survey because uh, they're actually looking for input from the public. So um, I really hope that uh, that you and everybody else there and everyone you know is uh, taking the time to do it. Um, yeah, it's really, really important. Hundred percent. We we talked about that on uh, on Lyft News as well, and I really think that, I mean, hopefully that 
these opinions are taken and heard and you know they build the strategy that works for everybody so definitely fill it out well you know we like to include everybody or at least I like to think so so you know I have a I understand everybody's position I I laud and appreciate um, all those people out there that put their neck on the line basically and have for many years for them so that the medical patient could have access to quality cannabis because they certainly weren't getting it from the government and if they didn't have a designated grower um, you know they were forced to the black market so um, yeah it's uh, you know we've moved forward quite a bit uh, but now the licensed uh, producers of course who have paid you know millions of dollars to become qualify you know qualify for the you know the regulations and uh, it's quite arduous uh, it's not easy to become a licensed producer it's very costly and I, I see their position as well they've spent a lot of money and uh, um, they're legally entitled to do it so um, they have a spot um, and and I think the the people providing it for the patient when nobody else was I think that they should have a spot and uh, and then I'm also hip to letting everybody maybe dabble and do a little bit of their own. Yep, sounds sounds like the dream. And then hopefully, yeah, yeah, that's the dream. But you know, well, it's government. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Anyhow, back to the Lift Expo in Toronto. Of course, uh, like you say, outstanding show. Um, the probably the I, I, you know the the worst thing that I I could think of that happened at the show was we weren't allowed to use our little balcony in the back and everybody was forced out front to, to consume their cannabis and you know lots of families going by to the Blue Jays games and that kind of thing and it was a little bit rough out there but um, um, you know I got, hopefully some, I got some good news for Vancouver then so uh, don't oh, worry <laughs> cool, cool 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 so yeah to me that was the only thing of course it would be nice if it, not necessarily the back balcony but somewhere where people could go and consume and not necessarily be in the throngs of thousands of people as, <laughs> as they're going off to the baseball game or whatever. You know, there were no incidences and nobody was uh, truly offended or anything like that. I mean, I, you know, as, as you know, it's fairly accepted there, um, the same as it is in Vancouver and, and Toronto. They're definitely the two most progressive cities in the country when it comes to cannabis tolerance, shall we say. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, with vapor lounges and seed companies and all that kind of stuff being in business for now uh, in Toronto and Vancouver, both for more than a decade. So I, I think it's, it's, it's even moved to that point where it's somewhat uh, um, tolerated in the community. But then again, you know, like you say, it would be nice if we were just sort of had an area somewhere where we could be and, uh, and, and not have to deal with the public and not have the public have to deal with us. But that's for a future show, of course. Um, attendance uh, was awesome, like I said. I, I, it was a great show for us. Um, uh, you know, get to see, of course, a lot of the people that we do business with, from not only from across Canada, but uh, from places elsewhere. A lot of people from Europe and the United States, which was really awesome to see. Um, I don't know how many vendors there were, but I, I guess the show looked pretty full or it was full. Um, 130 vendors. Wow. Nice. Nice. So yeah, definitely worthwhile. The price was good for the public. Um, I think that also had a lot to do with a lot more, uh, people showing up. So yeah, overall, I'm going to say, well, certainly is, it was a success for KDK and the embassy. Um, and uh, and everybody else around us. Uh, we made some good business contacts, renewed some old uh, business friendships, of course, and uh, yeah, get to get to uh, talk and uh, talk business and and do a little pleasure, of course, with uh, people that are uh, we we don't have contact with that much, like from Europe and the United States. So um, yeah, it was really really awesome for us. Right, really glad to hear it. <laughs> And I'm sure the feedback was fairly similar across the board. Yeah, I mean, I uh, we we did we took feedback surveys, and I talked to all the exhibitors, and I think that everyone everyone was really pleased with the way everyone came together. Obviously, as you said, there were some bad times for for a lot of businesses there, and I I, I really feel for them and what happened. But I I am glad that at least you know if if it was going to happen that it had a chance to happen before the show because that gave those companies a voice and an opportunity to get in front of the public and share their message and their story. So, 
you know, people could make more informed opinions. So in in one sense, at least the optimist in me is glad that it got a chance to happen before the show so people could really talk about it. So, um, you know, silver linings, I guess. You bet. You bet. Well, that's really awesome. So I think things will be certainly a lot better. Uh, we you got another sh- upcoming show, which uh, is going to be in Vancouver, correct? You got it at the Vancouver Convention Center on September 17th and 18th. Super. So again, a two-day show. Um, entrance is the same for the public, cost-wise? Yep, 15, at the, uh, 15 up front and 20 at the door. So nice. that's for both days. Just, you know, we wanted to make sure the price is accessible to everyone because I think that information is, is key for, you know, helping form public opinion and helping the public learn. And we, we've made sure that the expo is accessible to, to everyone. You know, it's, it's an all-ages event. It's... Uh, and, you know, it, it, it was inviting enough to the non-cannabis users so that they could come and learn and get involved in the industry. Yeah, you bet. It's a lot different than many of the trade shows or the trade shows that I've been doing the last 15 years being in the industry, which were more, let's call them head shop related or tobacco related. This definitely had that flair of uh, a highly medicinal with licensed producers being there and that kind of thing. Um, and, and I think it was a great opportunity for a lot of people out there who are sort of on the fence, maybe they have considered or can, are considering um, using cannabis as an alternative to their ailment. And uh, yeah, what a great uh, venue for them to come to and, and, and see and talk to a lot of people about it. Yeah. Now, there was a Vapor Lounge in Toronto. Is there going to be a Vapor Lounge in Vancouver? So, unfortunately, Vapor Laws in, uh, in Vancouver didn't allow us to have a Vapor Lounge, but we worked hard with the, the convention center to give, get them to, to work with us. So we came up with uh, a couple solutions that I'm really excited about. So the first is we have a dedicated smoking area outside, um, completely isolated and separated from the public. Uh, so we have a large space where you can smoke and vaporize and you know relax and get comfy. So that was the first one. And the second that I'm particularly excited about is uh, we partnered with a company called Tiki Tiki Pedicabs. And so what they have is they have 10 um, pedicabs. So you two people sit in the back and someone will drive you around. So you can step out of the show, hop into one of these cabs, um, and go on a nice little tour around the Vancouver Convention Center in the area. And you can smoke, you can relax, and they even have sealed canopies. So if you wanted to hotbox the pedicab, you're... Uh, so we're going to have little smoking tours around the surrounding area. So we're really looking forward to that. I might be asking for a little much. Do they happen to have a plug-in for my herbal air vaporizer? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll have to bring a portable along. Yeah. <coughs> Petty cab. That sounds that sounds pretty cool, actually. That's that a two person uh, two person thing. You Perfect. Can three in if you wanted, but uh, too comfortably. Right. Too comfortably. There you go. Perfect. Do a little, little uh, twist up a nice fatty. Hop in. Go for a little tour. Discuss your business, and uh, yeah. and by the time you get back, you're done. Beautiful. Exactly. Nice. I like it. Do you, what What's the cost for the pedicab? Do you know? Uh, my understanding is it's going to be between five and ten dollars. Oh. Pff. So. Excellent, excellent. Absolutely. You're going to have lots of munchies there for us uh, oh, smokers. You know. We always get hungry. Yeah, we're, uh, that's that's actually one issue we had with the Toronto show was um, I think we exceeded the expectation and they all the vendors ran out of food. So well, that can't happen again. <laughs> I don't think they were ready for, for uh, 10,000 hungry stoners. <laughs> yeah, that's always, uh, always a big plus. <coughs> um, yeah, for some reason, I don't know. People, uh, people are hungry at these events. <laughs> <laughs> now you have a lot of the same vendors coming back that we saw in Toronto. Yeah, I'd say about I'd say sixty five percent are have been around already, and uh, the other forty five are I'd say maybe fifty five forty five. Um, so oh, you know, there are a lot of local businesses involved, and so we've got a lot of the local. BC talent coming around this time around, so right, it'll definitely bit. be some familiar faces, but I think it'll be a good chance to meet some new friends too. <coughs> well, definitely, I think uh, I think you hit the right two towns anyhow, as far as you know, progression in the in the cannabis industry. Yeah. Uh, and, and Vancouver, I mean, they're definitely different environments. I feel that Toronto is definitely a more 
business focused growth in the cannabis industry, whereas Vancouver has a long storied history of home growing and sort of really getting involved in the the growing culture. So I think that that'll be reflected somewhat in the show. And um, so, you know, we want to have the two shows be appropriate to their their audience. So I think that the 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 roots of it are more more intact in Vancouver. So I think we'll see that in the show, too. Definitely, definitely. Um, one, I didn't ask if there was uh, uh, electrical plugins for the people where they're allowed to smoke. Um, I haven't actually. You know, it's a good thing to look into. I uh, I haven't, so I'll I'll check on that today. Just because some people will need to plug in, of course. Uh, but most nowadays, with the proliferation, of course, of portable vaporizers, are usually uh, usually charged up before they leave the home. Actually, I just got my my mighty. Um, from stores in Bickle at the Toronto show, and I got to say, I'm a, I'm a big fan. <laughs> yes, uh, portable vaporizers. Have, well, vaporizers in general have come around a, a long, you know, a long ways. That's what got me started in the industry 15 years ago, and uh, um, yeah, I've seen it evolve from, from uh, really, really crappy vaporizers that uh, that got the industry sort of started. Um, um, and got the interest in people going, and then out from that came really good quality vaporizers and many of them. So yeah, that industry has uh, blossomed like crazy over the last decade. And uh, yeah, vaporization. Of course, I recommend it to anybody and everybody. It's uh, it's, uh, it's healthier uh, and it's more efficient. So just those two reasons alone. Um, I don't know why anybody doesn't. Yeah, what, what I've really liked about vaporizers in the last little while is I feel like they're sort of, before they were a, a very utilitarian device, but they're, they're becoming a more consumer-friendly, uh, intelligently designed you know, piece of machinery these days. So there's a lot of really cool stuff coming out now, so it's, it's awesome to watch. You bet. So do you, uh, do you vaporize mostly? or you, uh, almost, like- almost exclusively. I... Uh, I I keep some papers around and I have a couple pieces of gear, but I mean, generally speaking, I'd, I'd say I'm 95% vaporization at this point. Right. Yeah, I, I'm the same. I I vaporize mostly. Um, of course, a lot of places it just isn't possible for uh, um, unless you have a portable. Um, and yeah, I just, of course sharing a joint with friends or around the dinner table or the uh, or the bar or whatever the case may be um, you know it's still a very social thing and that's the way I mean I'm in my 50s I, I grew up uh, that's that's just how we did it we we smoked it in joints or uh, crazy old metal pipes um, <laughs> that I don't recommend anybody use anymore <laughs> uh, at least go with glass anyhow a little bit uh, a little bit better for you. Uh, than smoking through a metal pipe, but yeah, that's uh, my whole life. Uh, um, I've I've smoked joints, and uh, uh, of course, by this time in life, I've become very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they look like cigarettes, actually. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I like to put a filter in. I don't know. I'm a I'm a filter guy, and in the early years, we never put filters in. But I don't know when I started. It's going to be a long time ago, and I. I always put a filter in my joints. Yeah, same. How about you, Casper? You're uh, you're a vape guy, joint guy. Only on a pipe. That's the only thing I use. Uh, if I use a vaporizer, it really hurts my throat. Unless I take time to put water in it and cook it real slow, I'll right. do that sometimes. I'll use a vaporizer when I'm chilling in front of the TV set. But normally, it's easier for me to just grab a pipe and run. And by the time a vaporizer's gotten warm and heated up. Hell, I've smoked two bowls and gone down the road. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Well, you know, I'm an impatient little guy, so I ain't got time to wait. You know, I'm at my age. You know, we've only got so many minutes left to live, and we better pack everything into what we got. So I can I, I got to cut short. I, I got to cut corners everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the, along the lines of vaporization, yes, of course, it is dry. So um, if you find it harsh, you can add a little bit of moisture to your product. And, uh, um, yeah, it uh, takes a little longer to get all of or extract all of the active ingredients. But um, it's certainly a lot smoother on the throat because it's not so dry. 
yeah, when I have time, if I'm sitting watching a comedy, if I got time to wait for it to heat up and and uh, add some water to it and keep it cool. But uh, if I again, if I use it too often, then it's I get this really sore throat, like I've been smoking uh, fiberglass, and then the next day I can't smoke at all. Ooh. Mm. Well, that's definitely no good. <laughs> that's what I thought. Uh, uh, it, it's not a good thing if you smoke today and cannot smoke tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a beauty, for sure. The beauty of the growing, uh, the growing options out there is there's something for everybody, though. So that's what it's all about. That is true. That got yours. True. I've got mine, and I welcome you to do whatever you please, whatever pleases you. <laughs> Well, this might be a good time for us to take a break, so I'll make that happen. And then we'll listen to a song about how fantastic marijuana is. And then when we come back, we'll pick up where we left off here at Time for Hemp. You are listening to the Time for Hemp Global Broadcasting Network. Please share us with your friends. At Corrupt King Seeds, we sell the finest marijuana seeds in the world. Grown organically with original genetics, every seed is cultivated for large yields, high THC content, and measured for both CBD and CBN levels. Did we mention we sell more than 20 of the world's best marijuana strains in feminized, auto-flowering, medical, and regular varieties, including White Widow, Blueberry, Purple Kush, Haze Extreme, and so many more. Through our website and friendly call support team, our seeds are available for direct order with speedy worldwide shipping. Crop King Seeds are also sold in over 100 locations worldwide. Excuse me, I'm looking to buy some Crop King Seeds. Look no further, my friend. <laughs> wow, they're here and in so many strains. Buy your seeds now, in store or online at CropKingSeeds.com. Or call us toll free at 1 844 Crop King. That's 1 844 276 7546. Just smoke. 
Get your smoke on one of my favorite tunes of all times. And that's why I've been here smoking out and dancing around the studio while I was listening to it. I would encourage you to check it out if I were you and let all your friends know about Time for Hemp. You can find that song and other groovy songs on our archive page if you just download the show and share us with your friends. It is Tuesday and my joint host is KDK Distributor. Kelly, Kristen, and Kelly, you and your team make it a point to help the medical marijuana movement, don't you? Yes, we certainly do. We have for the past several years now offered a free vaporizer. And by that, I mean free. And it's really, really, really simple to apply to get this free vaporizer. There are only two um, qualifications or requirements to enter your name into the draw. Um, Number one, you must use cannabis medicinally for whatever your ailment may be. doesn't matter. Absolutely makes no difference. The other requirement is um, that you can't afford one. And this is the whole reason why we give it away for free. This is designed for people who are on a limited income, whether it be um, social assistance, age program we have here in Alberta, um, old age pension, um, and sometimes some of these people really don't have much of an income at all. And uh, uh, it's it's something I identified early on that, that I realized that, yes, medical patients could benefit from a quality vaporizer, but a lot of them simply can't afford one. So this program was set up uh, a few years ago where we started to give them away, and um, uh, it's been quite successful, although I must say uh, maybe it's the same people listening, and we don't have the number of entries that we used to have, so if you're listening out there and you're a medical patient, love to have a vaporizer and can't afford one, or if you're involved in the medical cannabis industry, no doubt you have come in contact with people Um, who could use a quality vaporizer for free. Maybe you can pass that information on to them. And uh, we'd like to hear from you. Super simple. Send us your info to uh, me directly, Kelly, K-E-L-L-Y, at K-D-K wholesale.ca. Tell us a little bit about yourself. And um, again, like I say, you just must use cannabis medicinally and can't afford a quality vaporizer and you can be anywhere in the world we've sent them israel and europe many places uh, went to africa and several to, of course to the united states and canada so wherever you are in the world um, yeah just drop me a line and uh, we'll get your name in the draw and uh, hopefully we can get a free vaporizer out to someone uh, you know or love or or uh, or you need it yourself And on behalf of the marijuana movement, Kelly, that's a very gracious thing that you and your team do. And I would encourage people out there to let others know about it as well so that people who could really benefit from this wonderful offer can take advantage of it. With that said, we're going to get back to our joint chat, Kelly, with our joint guest here on the Big Joint Broadcast at Time for Hemp. You bet. Um, a question I'd like to uh, to ask you, Peter. Uh, I'm back going back to the Lift Expo in Toronto. Um, apparently, there uh, I don't know if many people knew about it. There was a free weed for a year uh, contest. Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, so we partnered with Broken Coast um, from BC, and so the the deal was exactly as great as it sounds. Uh, you came to the show. You could enter online, you could enter at the show, you could multiply your entries, and basically uh, one of our guests won free cannabis for a year. So the only limitation, I mean, it was a, a gram a day, so they got 365 grams, and 
you know, I, I like to think that we really helped a patient get their access to their medicine because, as as you've mentioned, and then with you know that awesome vaporizer offer, there are people out there that have difficulty affording their medicine. So knowing that we could help that was was great for us. Absolutely, with the uh, with the vaporizer, not only do they get a healthier uh, ingestion of their cannabis, it also extends their cannabis because it's much more efficient and patients use less cannabis with a quality vaporizer. So um, it really is a huge plus to, uh, to medical patients. So Absolutely. And, and uh, imagine that, a free vaporizer and free weed for a year. Holy smokes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can we, are we hopeful that we might have the same thing offered in Vancouver? So we're we're not we're not running the same contest. Uh, we do have a a comparable contest. It's not quite finalized yet, but to sort of give a hint, it's sort of in line with the give a man a fish and he eats for a day, and teach a man to fish and he eats for life. <laughs> nice. I think I follow that train of thought quite well. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, I wish you well on that, and and hopefully it comes to fruition. Um, uh, I know that. Uh, um, I, I think almost anybody would be interested in that offer for sure. And uh, cool, that's in September at the Lift Expo. Mm -hmm. Also, um, uh, I believe you you have something a little bit different that wasn't available or I've never really heard of available at any of the trade shows that I've been at, which sounds really awesome. It's something along the lines of a job fair. Yeah, so in, in Toronto, we found a lot of our attendees came... To, to learn about the industry as on a professional level, you know, a lot of them have, have a lot of history with cannabis, but they don't know how to really turn their passion into a career. So uh, with the job fair we're throwing in Vancouver, the goal would be that you can, you can come, you can bring your resumes, you can learn about the various skills that are needed in the industry. And, you know, there, I think there's a lot more careers in the industry than a lot of people are aware exist. I mean, you, you come to a, a cannabis trade show and you see the hundreds of exhibitors and all the different things that they do. Um, there's there's a spot for everyone, I'm sure, whatever your career history is. So uh, the idea that we could bring people to the show, we could help them network with these companies and so and and get some extra knowledge just to help them find what they want to do in the industry. So um, yeah, we'll be having a job fair and you'll be able to come and learn about how to how to get involved and how to make a difference. Excellent. Yeah, that's something that's. Uh... I think is new and exciting and has never been available at any of the trade shows I've ever been at. Um, I guess, because I guess a lot of the time it's, it wasn't legal. So that really wasn't an opportunity, but yes, as we move towards legalization, I think the employment opportunities obviously in that industry are going to skyrocket in the first, you know, five or six years um, as everybody, you know, fits in their spot, I guess, whether we have uh, micro growers and home growers or edibles and all that kind of stuff. And it's hard, you know, who knows which direction everything's going to go. But um, um, I think, like you say, there is tremendous opportunity in this industry. Uh, certainly once we move towards total legalization, there will be plenty of, uh, of work in this industry for sure, for sure. Yeah, and there's and a lot of people with their existing careers. I mean, there's there's so many skilled people looking for work out there. So I think that being able to bring them into the fold and have them join us on, you know, I'm I'm quite happy with my career, and I'm sure you guys can say the same. <laughs> you bet, you bet. We're you know we're normal businesses, really. Yeah. Um, we need bookkeepers, we need accountants, we need receptionists, we need. Um, warehouse people we need shippers and receivers and we need people who take orders and we need people to bake goodies and you know deliver them or whatever the case may be uh, to run these uh, operations and i really love the thought of little microbreweries or micro grows sorry yeah um, where um, you know we could get some specialty stuff that you know you can only get from that one producer um, you know, I, I don't know. It's an exciting time. The opportunities uh, hopefully are going to be vast and huge. And again, I'm going to jump back to that discussion paper. Any of you people listening out there that are in Canada, please take the time to do the survey. It's really a very, very long uh, link uh, 
to get to the website. Um, but if you just uh, 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 Google uh, discussion paper on cannabis, Health Canada discussion paper on cannabis, it'll come up. And uh, yeah, please take the time to uh, to uh, to fill it out and, and and have your opinions expressed. Because uh, if everybody gets in there and gets involved, maybe they do look at it and say, hey, you know, why not? Let's let's just do everybody. Micro grows, uh, licensed producers, large grows, vapor lounges, uh, you know, dispensaries. I don't know. I, I think we need them all, to tell you the truth. Coffee shops, for that matter, are another thing that I find uh, really awesome. That's, a you know... I've experienced in Amsterdam for many, many years. You know, it's just so right that you go into a coffee shop, you order up some cannabis, or maybe you just have cannabis of your own, and you're wanting to uh, puff something on the way to work or on the way home. Sorry, I shouldn't say on the way to work, depending, I guess, on what you do. But on your way home from work, let's say, you can just pop into a place, have a coffee, have your little espresso or a soda pop or something along that lines, twist yourself one up, consume it and move along your way. You're not having to go behind the building or in the park or, you know, wherever, whatever. It's just um, civilized is it probably the term that I'm looking for, um, that you can just pop into a place like that and consume it, not having to be outside and having to be in anybody's face with the smell. Maybe they don't like it or whatever. It just really keeps it separated. And, uh, yeah, I really like the coffee shop idea as well. And certainly if that one were to come along, um, you know, that would be a really big employer right across the country, everywhere. Absolutely. I, uh, you know, I, I can't wait for the day where, you know, it's constantly becoming more and more socially acceptable, but um, I look forward to being able to sit in public and relax with you know other like-minded individuals, and you know see the stigma just slowly disappear. <laughs> Absolutely, well, we'll be always adult orientated. So, you know, anywhere where there's children, well, obviously um, there has to be a separate spot, or it should be, you know, kept within reason. I, I suppose, I guess, you know, when you look at a lot of the events out there. They do sell alcohol, and they're family friendly. So, um, I guess cannabis just has to be right in there with them all, socially acceptable and uh, legal, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, instead of hanging out at the beer gardens, I want to hang out at the weed gardens. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that that reminds me of is um, Lyft hosts a, a cannabis lounge at the Zoomer Festival in Vancouver and Toronto. So, the Zoomer Festival is a festival for those over the age of 65 um they have everything from dog shows to vacation packages to bedding and so the lift cannabis lounge has been there to help teach the elderly about med- cannabis as a potential medicine and each year that we do it it's amazing the the change that we see in you know acceptance and the first the first year there was a lot of distance and maybe pointing and snickering but uh, each year they get closer and warmer and, you know, you hear more and more stories of people who say, oh, I, my, my mother could never, you know, she could no longer live her life anymore. And she was on all these medications and then she tried medicinal cannabis. And now, you know, she has another 10 years of enjoying gardening and, you know, that stuff. So it, it's really powerful to see that. And I, I just think that it's amazing to see the, the transition that's happening each year. Yeah, it's very powerful. I, uh, my, my father is, uh, actually turning 75 the end of August, and um, we've recently started giving him cannabis as an edible in the evenings. Um, they actually dispense it at the long-term care center where he's at, um, which is really amazing. They bring in brownies, uh, all cut up and, and packaged, and, uh, and they put them in the freezer, and they actually administer it. They are aware that um, through various tests that we did, him with it and him without it. And not only does the doctor, all of the staff at the center and even my family all believe that it uh, has been a wonder for him. Uh, and it's as simple as eating a small brownie, very low dosage at nine o'clock at night. And what that does is it helps him to sleep and get a good night's rest, which in turn 
gives him his appetite back. He is rested. He heals better. And he feels better because he's getting sleep. Um, it's been an amazing turnaround. He was up and wandering around at 2 o'clock in the morning and phoning my mom at 4 o'clock in the morning and et cetera, et cetera, and just and out of sorts and not eating properly and, and so on and so forth. And we put him on the cannabis and instantly um, a, complete, a complete turnaround. It's been really amazing to see and, uh, and to have the doctor and the staff at, this, at the uh, uh, long-term care facility all on board with it um, and wanting to do it, including my father, who, of course, was never a cannabis user his whole life. So um, he wishes to have it, wants to have it, knows that it helps him. All the people at the facility know that it helps them. And, of course, the, all that information funneled back to the doctor. The doctors are right with it as well. So, um, yeah, I've, uh, it's been really, really awesome for my dad, I have to say, on a personal level, just uh, giving him uh, rest, which uh, in turn gives him all those other things. His quality of life is substantially better um, with cannabis uh, included in his regimen every day. That's really great. Yeah, it's super to see, and uh, um, I, and I, I've noticed it, of course, being in the industry for the last 15 years and working closely with the medical community, I've seen many wonders, uh, not just, uh, you know, the, the children that that have seizures, what a, what a wonderful thing it's been for them, um, people with multiple sclerosis, I know an individual who was immobile, and cannabis brought them certainly not full mobility back, but brought them mobility and, and uh, amazing to see that person's face from basically wanting to commit suicide lying in bed um, with no, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm stuck here to all of a sudden, wow, there's something that actually gives me my mobility back. Mind blowing and uh, very moving to see that. For sure. And the Lift Expo is going to help promote and uh, make that happen a little bit more. And I'm sure that makes you feel good. I know that um, I personally uh, feel good being in this industry. And I know that I've had conversations with Casper. And I'm sure you feel the same way too, Casper. Absolutely. I sure do. And uh, as nothing better than to cheer on our fellow hardworking activists here in the big broadcast. Excellent. So we look forward to seeing Peter and uh, all the returnees from Toronto uh, at the upcoming expo in Vancouver. And of course, the new people that we'll get to see out there. Um, I know we've expanded our booth double size and um, we've partnered with Greenhouse Seeds. Their booth is doubled in size from Toronto. So hopefully bigger and better things in Vancouver. And uh, it just keeps keeps on getting bigger and better. I think uh, the time is right for these for this type of trade show in Canada and I, I think you've proven that with the excellent start in Toronto and hopefully that ball just continues to um, you know, roll down the mountain and make that snowball a little bit bigger as it uh, each and every show. Agreed. I'm looking forward to it. Anything else new we can expect at the show? Well... <laughs> I mean, there's going to be a lot of a lot of similarities. I mean, we have a whole new lineup of speakers, and so they'll have a lot of great stuff to say. Uh, we've got some decision makers from Health Canada coming to speak, so I think that'll be really valuable. Uh, I, overall, I think that with the big transition that's coming to the MMPR, um, I'm not sure if everyone's aware, but essentially uh, a decision needs to be made by Health Canada by August 24th on what changes they'll make to make cannabis more accessible to patients. So uh, there's a lot of talk out there about the possibility of home growing, which I think everyone's pretty excited about. Um, and I think that that will be reflected in the show as well. So we're, ho we're hopeful that by when, once September rolls around, we'll have a, an idea of what, what home growing might look like and whether or not Canadians will be able to grow their own medicine. And if they are, I think the expo will be an amazing opportunity to get the supplies you need, learn about, the best ones and you know that'll that'll be a really exciting time for us absolutely no i'm uh, i'm certainly big on the grow your own um i don't know how the government's going to take it but hey again back to the discussion paper for you people out there who'd like to grow your own 
now's the time to uh, put your voice out there and, and let them know that that's how you feel because certainly the more people that do, there no doubt the more chance there is that it'll happen. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity, usually not afforded to the general public when it comes to the government. So please take advantage of it. And, uh, you know, if you want a home grow, let them know. Um, if you want to have coffee shops, let them know. You know, it's, um, it's our one and only opportunity. And uh, let's take advantage of it. You bet. Cool, cool, cool. I'm, uh, I don't know if I've got anything more to ask. Obviously, the weather in Vancouver at that time of the year should be pretty awesome. And um, uh, with a place that's out of the way to smoke, that takes care of that little issue. And uh, the penny ride, that sounds like uh, something that um, um, I'm sure a lot of people will take advantage of. I, do you have any idea of how many of these uh, bicycle guys are going to be around? Uh, we, we've got a ton of them that will be floating around. So okay, should be, awesome. should be readily accessible. We'll have the fleet out. Awesome, awesome. And uh, for... Those of you that have never been to Vancouver, it's a beautiful city, probably one of the most beautiful in the world. Uh, they have an awesome cannabis culture. Um, it's it's over the top when you, you know, people from Calgary, where I'm from, would certainly be overwhelmed that had never been there and seen what's going on out there. Um, as far as the food industry goes, there's some killer restaurants and some of the quality of the food is outstanding with the um, organic movement and that kind of stuff out there. You don't find an awful lot of that here in Calgary, but you'll find a ton of that out in Vancouver. So the food is spectacular. The cannabis has always been good from British Columbia. And uh, the Lift Expo uh, was a stellar event in, Van in Toronto. I expect the same and are more in Vancouver. Yes. And we certainly hope to see you out there. Again, it's September uh, 17th and 18th, Peter. Yeah, you got it. Perfect. So it's Saturday and Sunday, so all of you can make it out there. Um, yeah, it's a far cry for the Newfoundlanders, but um, um, certainly us from Alberta, it's only a short one-hour flight from Calgary or just a little better. So um, okay. we're definitely going to be there, and we hope to see everybody there. It's uh, Again, it's, uh, it's a wonderful community that we're, I feel privileged to be involved and to work in. And uh, these events uh, can showcase all of us. And, um, yeah, the, with the bargaining uh, industry, um, if you're interested in starting a business or you're interested in working in the industry, um, if you're interested as a medical patient, seeing about if, it's, if it's, uh, cannabis is for you or an alternative to what you're currently using, um, if you want to become a medical patient, you already know that you do. If you want to learn to grow, like you say, Peter, there's going to be equipment there. Uh, there's going to be seed companies there. And, and you know, this is another wonderful opportunity where you can literally talk to the breeders about their genetics and what, what they may suggest for what you're looking for. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing to have those, you know, that type of, uh, expertise on the show floor, shall we say, uh, available to the general public. So um, I hope to see all and everybody there, uh, whether you have uh, an interest or not. Uh, certainly there's jobs to be had, there's business opportunities, uh, and, and of course, uh, medical patients, let's not forget about them. It's a big part of this industry and why we've actually uh, moved towards legalization. Um, they had to get it medically first. If that were ever to happen, and, and uh, you know, that's that's long decade ago now, over a decade. So, yeah, onward and upward is all one can say. And, uh, whew, the face of legalization is around the corner. So uh, uh, get your voice heard. Uh, fill out the, the discussion uh, paper and uh, uh, read it and know it and uh, fill out your uh, questionnaire and let your, your uh, opinion be known. And with that said, we are down to the last couple of minutes of this fantastic hour. And uh, this is a good time to give a shout out to our favorite URLs. We'll start with our joint guest, Peter. Well, you can find us on lift.co, our new shortened domain. 
Uh, you can also find out about the Lift Expo at liftexpo.ca. And you can find us on every form of social media that a person will use, be it Instagram, Facebook, whatever's cool now. <laughs> and yeah. Kelly? You bet. Um, again, I, I want to bring attention to the discussion paper. So for those of you that are listening in Canada, want to hear your voice heard, just go to Health Canada uh, Cannabis Discussion Paper and uh, it'll come up and uh, please take the time. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful opportunity. And I want to remind people out there that we are a 24-hour day, seven-day-a-week, all cannabis, all the time, broadcasting network. We have a group of people who are dedicated to ending prohibition that works diligently to create new content for you to share with your friends. Please go to the website, download the MP3s. They're free to, to put into your smart devices and pass around. we got editorial cartoons you can also share. And a, monthly, and a monthly newsletter that you might want to subscribe to. And uh, remember, the next time you hear me, you'll know that it's time for hemp. Look at all that money, yeah, the money that they spent. Take another look and say some time for him. Don't cut trees for paper, cause it hurts the environment. Hi, I'm Scott with Flex Your Rights. We talked last time about some of the ways that a police encounter can get out of hand and even go horribly wrong. And a couple of people asked the same question in response to that video, which is, what do you do if police say they smell marijuana? And this is actually a really tough question, and uh, for reasons that I'll get into, it's, it's something that you might want to learn more about, even if you don't actually use marijuana. Uh, the truth is that you don't have a lot of options in this situation, but let me break it down for you and I'll just try to be as helpful as I can. The reason this is such a big issue is that the smell of marijuana by itself is considered probable cause to believe there's a crime going on. So as long as pe police uh, smell it or claim that they smell it, uh, in most situations they can automatically search you. And uh, unfortunately, the courts trust police officers to be honest about this, which creates all sorts of problems. And, and that's why it's something that can affect you whether or not you're a marijuana user. The smell of marijuana is something that the officer might bring up as an issue to sort of manufacture probable cause after you've refused to search. And so that's why it's a big deal. And so let's talk about, about some of the ways that, that you can protect yourself from having this happen to you. First and foremost, we want to eliminate the possibility that you're actually running around reeking of marijuana. Believe it or not, a lot of police officers aren't liars, and they aren't going to just say that they smell pot if they don't. So most of the time when an officer claims that they smell marijuana, it's because they actually smell it, and that's the reason that they think there's something going on. That's why they want to search. So, so first of all, we have to eliminate that factor, and that's going to reduce your odds of getting jammed up considerably. Above all, this means that you aren't ever smoking marijuana in your car. Smoking in the car is just the best and most efficient way in the world to get arrested for marijuana. We get emails at FlexiRights every day from people who got in trouble, and nine times out of ten it had something to do with smoking in or around a vehicle. That's just the number one way that it happens in my experience. And and there's no there's no reason for it. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, if you're so impatient that you can't, you know drive for 30 minutes without sparking something, well, then you're going to hate being subjected to a weekly urinalysis when you're on probation after getting busted, inevitably. So cool it with that for your own good, please. And beyond that, if there's anything in your car that might smell like marijuana, for example, a bag of it or an apparatus or what have you, you know, keep that stuff stored away and sealed up. Better yet, keep it out of the car. You know, it really shouldn't be there. Unfortunately, making sure your car doesn't smell like marijuana might not be enough. It's really just the beginning. If the officer becomes really suspicious of you, they can lie or just imagine it, even when it isn't there. And for, for you, that can be just as bad as the real thing, because it, it means that, that they now believe they have probable cause to go ahead and search the vehicle, or at least that's what they're claiming. Another important thing is, is just to make sure that you keep your car clean in general, because when police see a dirty car, they think of 
drugs. So if your car is clean, the officer is just a lot less likely to, to even start with you. And again, this is a preventative measure, but you know it's, it's important. It really does make a difference. Along these same lines, remember that police profile like crazy. So if you're running around looking super cool all the time, they're going to notice you. I, you know, I would never recommend that you tone down your style. You know, it's a free country, and you shouldn't be afraid to be yourself and be awesome. But also just be aware that if you have a distinctive look or a flashy vehicle, it just means you're more likely to get harassed. You know, it's bullshit, but but be ready for it. I get emails all the time from biker dudes and people like that who don't even do drugs but are getting pulled over and harassed and searched by police all the time for dope. It's just a dumb stereotype, but but it's also the reality of how our laws are enforced, particularly under the war on drugs. Think about what, what you have with you, for example, if, if you do fit a profile or if you have a history of getting harassed by police, you factor that into your decision making about whether to make yourself vulnerable to a criminal arrest. Now, the last thing, and this is perhaps the most important point of all, is that you always want to assert your rights no matter what. Keep in mind that that when police say, for example, that they smell marijuana, it might just be a trick. They might just be trying to judge your reaction or scare you, and they're looking for sort of these verbal or, or nonverbal you know, cues from you, your eyes darting around or your breathing heating up and these kinds of things that uh, police officers deliberately try to provoke you to, to create those reactions when they're suspicious. It may not be their intention to do a full search of the vehicle um, unless you give off some sign of guilt. And so things like making references to marijuana, you look stoned, you smell like pot, these things could just be a trick. And so you don't want to panic at that point and waive your rights. You always want to refuse the search. If they're asking to search the vehicle, you always want to say no. And if they're claiming to smell marijuana, you want to respond the way that an innocent person would, would respond. And hopefully you are innocent because you haven't been smoking pot in your car. So you say, you know, officer, I don't smell anything. Or, you know, officer, whatever you're, you're smelling, it didn't come from in here. You know, it may or may not stop them, but it, but it gives you a better chance of getting out of the encounter. And most importantly, if you do flex your rights and ultimately you're searched illegally, if you're arrested as a result of illegally obtained evidence, all of these things can be challenged in a court of law. Now, probable cause derived by something like marijuana odor is hard to disprove in court. It's very hard. But an officer who, for example, would make a claim like that dishonestly may very well have a track record of making the same claim every time they pull somebody over and, and the search is refused. And so you got to keep in mind that there's a track record here, and a, and a good attorney can get in there in a court of law and maybe even win your case. So don't give up. That's the important thing, is to sort of be prepared for all of these possible outcomes. And this is a particularly tricky situation, and one that sort of lends itself to a little bit of corruption and dishonesty on the part of police officers. But if you're ready for it, and if you make the right choices, if you keep your car clean, if you assert your rights, even this situation is something that you can have a chance of, of driving away from safely. And finally, please do check out our website at flexyourrights.org. We have a, a detailed Frequently Asked Questions page there that we've spent years putting together, so you'll find a lot of interesting information. And our videos, of course, are all available for free here on YouTube. But our uh, excellent uh, instructional videos with live actors and cops and all that stuff, those are also available uh, on DVD for a small donation through our website. So if you can afford to make a donation and you'd like to get the DVD, we really do appreciate your support. So thanks again, and be safe out there. You are listening to The Time for Hemp Global Broadcasting Network. Please share us with your friends.